All right, Dr. Malone, I think we're uh, live on Facebook. Um, this is my, frankly, it's uh, my first time using this. My staff has used this before, but I have never used this uh, Facebook Live uh, thing. And I, I guess I wanted to chat with you today, like we've been doing every day about this coronavirus stuff from the perspective of a medical doctor. Um, first of all, give us an update as what's going on um, in Pensacola, specifically in regards to the coronavirus. And then maybe on a national perspective, what's happening. And uh, as we get questions, we'll, we'll interrupt you maybe and ask you some questions. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, so the locally, Escambia County just released their numbers, I guess, with the rest of the numbers and have gone up to 17 in the county um, from 13 yesterday. And uh, has had three of those uh, within city limits, I understand. So um, we were at 17 positives with 237 tests performed, rather, uh, with a, that's about a 7% positivity rate, which is in line with what you're seeing in some of these much larger um, populations with uh, much more testing where they're still between seven and a half, 12 percent as far as positivity. I guess that would be reflective that there's adequate or programming going on. You really don't want to have, uh, you know, hey, we had 100 tests and all of them were is you're probably not getting everybody then. Or you also don't want to have, hey, we did a thousand tests and we got one positive. Then so there's a weakness somewhere. So, 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 so how many tests were given that were negative? Uh, 217. Okay. The 237 uh, were listed as negative. There's a couple that were pending still. I think it was like three when I just looked, last looked. So the 237 went through the parking lot, got the swab done. 17 are positive, 217 are negative, and a couple are outstanding at this point. And those are people that, go ahead. Could somebody be negative for coronavirus, have symptoms of coronavirus, and then test positive later just because they're not shedding the virus? Or if, if um, or, it, it, or is it true that if you're having symptoms from corona, you're gonna test positive for corona? Uh, you, you that, that, that second situation should, should be what people are falling into. Uh, you're shedding virus they're finding before you're symptomatic. And that's yeah. where this is much different than the flu, where people were walking around feeling just fine and they're shedding virus and basically passing it on to others without even knowing that they were ill. So it, you'd like to think that if the strength of the test is there, that it's catching the, the true positives that are making it through the initial screening process to get uh, you know the appointment to come and have a test performed that was that the other 217 people may have been the seasonal flu may have been seasonal cold or allergies or something like that but their story was concerning enough when they call on the phone that you know hey i had recently or i was in contact with someone who traveled you know the other trigger questions that would say we can't ignore this one all right uh are there, I know everything is new. This is a sort of a brand new deal for us, but is there any data on the number of tests that are not done appropriately or properly to, to get, cause I know you have to go way back into the sinuses to get the, to get the sample and same with the, I think same with the uh, oral sample. Uh, is there any data on how many, what percentage of the tests are, are negative for uh, basically for virus, but they're negative because they didn't get the proper sample. Yeah, so you're talking about operator or collection error. Yes. And then, yes. there's, then, then there's also one other source of error where it's error to the sample before it makes it to the lab. It's not stored appropriately, things like that, or the, the test. Okay. Done yeah. While well, all on the all lab that. table. So right. yeah. So so all those. Um, the, 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 I guess everything that I've read is that they're open to the idea that that is happening. There's no measure on it at this point. Uh, okay. I guess everything every, everything at this point is is to try and catch the positives. So I, I think this is going to be something that um, in a post mortem set is that I guess lack of a better. Uh, the statisticians will go back and look at this and say, you know, where were the weaknesses and try to learn from that. But to answer your original question, I don't see anything like that um, right now that's being published. And I've looked high and low through all the stat sites. Okay. And then I read somewhere that is Baptist, does Baptist now have a testing facility on their campus or? Uh, as far as I understand, they do. And um, one of the uh, strengths or differences of that, of that, um, that 
it was going to include testing for uh, influenza A, influenza B, as well as um, uh, some of the other causes for, so that you don't just come up and get the swab done and say, now I gotta go home and wonder if I have coronavirus. You may go home and say, I have a influenza A. So it, it, it gives you a diagnosis instead of having to wait for the three to five days, whatever the um, turnaround happens to be at that moment. So they are offering or adding that to their arsenal of testing. All right. So um, did the Sacred Heart test have a screen for the other uh, viruses? I don't, or? Based, on, based, on, based on everything I've heard, I do that there was no. So okay. it, I, I, think, I think with the Baptist rollout, Baptist is a little bit of a up. It's uh, being coordinated through the Baptist Medical Group. And, um, I think it's at the towers over there um, by the hospital. So okay. I, I think adding that that testing to it is certainly something that is is worth, if anything, some peace of mind, and also to let you know, like, yeah, you have flu A, you're still sick, uh, and you're you could still get virus, but that's not the reason right now. So it lets you know what your uh, what your touch points can be in life as far as family or other loved ones. Right. So uh, have the percentages changed as far as um, uh, the numbers on who gets uh, who gets admitted to the hospital with these with this with the coronavirus? That it's you know the, everybody's heard the 80 20 um, 20 percent of the cases um, well 80 percent of the people that end up in bad shape are over a certain age and 20 percent um, of the cases. Um, uh, what is the 80 20 split? I can't even remember what it was, but it seems like well, so, it, so, so, it, favored, it favored the younger uh, folks versus the older folks as far as yes, the so, split. So the AD is what they're calling the mild cases of this, and these include people who may not even know that they were ill, just blowing up the allergies, never gotten tested, and, and now they're back feeling normal. Um, so that percent, the 20% of people that feel sick enough to seek treatment. Uh, whether it's just an ER visit to, you know, be triage, so to speak, to make sure that they're tolerating it well, chest or x-ray lab work, make sure you're not dehydrated, and then go home and weather the rest of the storm. Uh, but in that 20%, uh, a quarter of that, which would be 5% of the total uh, of, of those who are um, positive, uh, are requiring admission as well as ICU type. And, and ICU doesn't always include ventilator, but that's where if you required a ventilator, you would be in the ICU for that. All right. uh, to answer your original question, I don't believe I don't. I haven't seen anything that shows that there's been a big change in those numbers. A lot of those okay. numbers came from the Italian models, the Chinese models, and the Iranian models. You know, I guess we have the benefit of time on our end to anticipate what we're going to see. But in the end, the American models or the Florida models may be different. Um, is it is it wrong for us to predict what's going to happen here by looking at countries like Italy? Um, in Spain, who sort of didn't have a full-blown kind of uh, shelter in place, you know, for the whole nation, um, or is it, or are we more comparable to uh, Singapore and some of the, and Japan and Hong Kong, where they actually, I think, had a more of a, an aggressive shelter in place quarantine uh, period and they were able to dramatically decrease the, uh, uh, what do they say, the, the uptick in cases. And when you yeah, look at the so graphs, the, just the cases, I know we're not talking about rates, but the cases, when you look at the cases, number of cases that they have in those countries, um, especially in Japan, where, when I think I've never been to Japan, but just from what I know about Japan, it's not exactly a sprawling place. I mean, people are, as compacted as they are in New York City, for instance, um, I would think in Tokyo, right? But but if if you look at the way their cases came in and how they leveled off, and my understanding is they did it with social, uh, the social um, uh, procedures that 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 uh, that the federal government and the local governments have been trying to get us to obey, and which we're all trying to obey to some extent. Um, are we more like Italy, or are we more like Hong Kong, or are we somewhere in between? Uh, I, I think right now we're in between. I think you want to be like the Hong Kongs, you want to be like the South Koreas, 
right. um, where where I think the 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 that culture is a whole lot easier to shut everything down. It's like, nope, they told us we need to stay inside, so we're going to stay inside. Here, it's you know, I can't believe they want us to stay inside until you know it's something really rattling happens. So I I don't think it's we compare to the Italian model. Um, I would love to compare to the South Korean models to see those numbers flattened off real quick. And that was with some pretty strict control, which I think the population was with. And they also had widespread testing, which we have now, and, we're, and we continue to uptake there. So if, if you're asking me which one we want to go, I want to go on the South Korean model or that, right. that line even I was more quick. curious. Well, it seems like to me that if once we determine which, which uh, country we're more akin to, we could look at and see what happened to them <laughs> uh, in the second, third week, fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, and we could sort of extrapolate from that what's going to happen here. The, the CEO of Starbucks was on uh, CNBC the other day, and you know they have stores in China that have been closed until this week, I think. And he and his uh, executive board or board of directors or whoever were meeting this weekend. And they were trying to figure out whether we were more like uh, China or Singapore or Italy. And they concluded as a corporation that our country was more like China, um, w which basically means that we, 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 had, we didn't really learn anything from the previous countries. We just sort of feeling our way through this like we're the first people to do it. And he said that his observation of how we're reacting to this is most comparable to how China was reacting to this in week three. Yeah. And th that was his take. And I thought it was pretty interesting to see his take because of course they have an interest in predicting this fairly, you know, accurately because they have not only to protect their employees and their partners, their franchisees, I guess, but they also have to, uh, predict from a financial perspective what their losses are going to look like and versus how they're going to ramp up production or their profits in China now that the thing has died down. Um, mm -hmm. And if, well, if, we're, if we're in week three here, uh, and this started at the beginning of December for China and ended like last week, um, uh, that's a little concerning, right? Because that seems like. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it, it, and 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 I I agree with that. It's comparable to China in some respects, but I think it, it, we're 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 unique. And I guess they mentioned this a couple of times in some of the press things that I've been watching. Is uh, you know, New York City or New York or the New York New Jersey area. I mean, you could say is that is that comparable to China versus another part of the country? Is that comparable to another country? Like, do we have different parts of our country that compare to different uh, histories that recent that this this has already gone through? You know what I mean? And it's right. not it's, it's not for uh, being unprepared. It's just by the nature of the the urban setting of locally here Cordova Park in one building. You right. Know, and, and so does, does it transmit just based on the urban setup versus uh, something more of a suburban or rural setting? Uh, maybe that might be part of it as well. So I think to compare country to country, uh, I, I personally don't think that that's uh, the, the answer that I'd be able to give. But I'd rather say this part of our country is comparable to that country kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I get that. I think that's accurate. Um, the 17 people that we have, what kind of data do we have on those 17 people? Did they give any biographical uh, information? Ages? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. I'll have to pull that up real quick. Um, okay. Uh, it, uh, basically, the, the, there was three men that tested positive just in the last 24 hours, and uh, none of those were travel-related. Uh, see here. Here we go. So in Escambia County, we're between, let's see here, uh, yeah, the, the last, like, eight positive tests, none of them were travel related. Only four of our tests were positive, positive travel related, but we have 20, 63 year old male, 36 year old male, the last three that were positive. Um, and it looks like it's pretty, let's see, three, four, five. We have five females, the rest males, and four of them traveled France, Colorado, what about their Illinois, ages? Louisiana. Um, it looks like we are averaging to 22 years, we'll go, we span from 22 years old up to, 
Uh, 76 is the oldest age that I'm seeing here. This is for Escambia County. Go over to Santa Rosa County, and that's the one that everybody saw yesterday. The two-year-old uh, was the youngest male, and going up to a 76-year-old male uh, with travel with Alabama and Georgia. So, and so uh, does it say which ones are in the hospital and what condition they're in, or does it do not give that much? Uh, no, no, that's not disclosed. No, okay. it, it, none of that information is. In, uh, last I saw, I, I didn't see, um, at least on the most recent press releases, that Baptist feeding anybody that was infected at this time. They had the original case uh, a couple weeks ago that had passed away that was transferred from Santa Rosa County. But at, at least most recently, they were not getting a positive uh, admission. All right. Doctor, we have a question on Facebook. Um, okay. This lady works in a medical office and she is still seeing a limited number of patients. What do you recommend that she do to limit her exposure um, to the virus? And she didn't say what kind of physician's office it is, but I guess. Um, well, well I'd, I'd like to think that any, any physicians that are, are, are medical providers that are seeing uh, patients at this time probably have a office wide policy or should have one in place where the employees first and foremost are making sure that they're healthy before they've been coming to work. So it's kind of like what we did at Zarzar Zar Law or uh, put in the office uh, as recently as uh, last Tuesday, I guess, where we were checking our temperature, making sure that we were reporting symptoms and being open and acceptable to, you know, should you even be here kind of stuff. And as an employer uh, or a business owner, you need to be willing to say, it's not worth you being here. So you need to go uh, an employee. So, I guess well, what about patients though? Like I mean, any other yeah, patients are like customers and clients here. So what, yeah. how do they handle like here comes somebody and they're coming to the doctor and let's assume she's at a doctor where you know if you have sniffles, you're supposed to come in, yeah. right? So <laughs> yeah, you treat everybody like they yeah. have the virus. I mean that's what I would think. I mean I I, I probably would. I mean I'm treating everybody like they have yeah. the virus, and I'm in the law. Yeah. So I mean yeah yeah well that that's what I was getting at. So then the next thing is comes into your office. So if you're treating people who are acutely ill at, at, at an office, uh, these people really shouldn't be coming to your office. And that's something that the health department is going to tell you as well. These people need to be coordinating to get tested first. When, you know, so they're, they're calling ahead and they're saying, hey, I have the sniffles. And uh, is it, if, if it's a slam dunk on the phone, like this is seasonal allergies, this patient has a history of this, then yeah, they come in or you try to do this. Um, but if they're coming in, it's, it's washing your hands, wiping services aggressively, any kind of touch points and in a proper, in an appropriately staffed and uh, supplied office, they can do all that stuff and still see the people who require treatment. If it's just for an annual physical or for annual blood work or check your blood pressure and titrate medications, that can be done uh, without having a patient in the office. It can also be put off for, you know, it's very acceptable to say you can get your blood work done three months from now if it's just for annual lab work. All right. Another question that just came in. Uh, this lady uh, I says, I receive a lot of packages. Should I be concerned about the virus living on the packages? Um, the, the CDC is telling you no, and uh, that's uh, the party line. Uh, if, it, if it's been shipped, you know, people are, I think people are worried about, is it coming from either China or a, an endemic, or is it coming from a facility that, like an Amazon shipping center that, yeah, or an Amazon shipping center where, one one employee tested positive. Um, it, it, cardboard. We learned that last week when we did a video, and I think that uh, just exercising caution, depending on what the package is going to arise. But I don't think that there's any reported cases that that was the that was the vector that someone was. The, the, the other thing. That, but I, the, the other thing I was thinking about is who, who touches more packages than than anybody. Like I would think the UPS people, the FedEx people. The postal mm -hmm. service folks, I mean, they're touching packages all day long, every day. And if, if it was on the packages, wouldn't they be getting sick at an alarming rate? <laughs> like a, they'd be going to the hospital a lot. Right. And, and I, I think the correlation well, would have been made already. Oh, we got every UPS person is now out of work because they're in the hospital with coronavirus or every postal service person is, is in the hospital. So I think, I think what you're saying is accurate, and I think it bears out in this. I was thinking about it today when the postman came in, and you know, they're not, he's not even wearing gloves. And I'm thinking, if he was this much concerned about that, like if somebody on his yeah. staff or at the post office had sent a memo around, look, Johnny in, at the Milton office has got coronavirus. You think he got it from a package? Or they sent a notice out to the, uh, all the 
uh, postmen and women, we've seen an uptick in coronavirus with the handling of packages. You, yeah. they would be acting a lot different. And well, wrong. And, and logic tells. Well, logic tells you that it wouldn't be the packages at that point. It'd be the doorknobs, the everything they take in, in making a delivery, um, the in and out of the car, and the contact with other people, the handing people packages. You'd be worried about that than the actual package itself. But all the people so, inside, the, I guess, that are routing the packages and sorting yeah. the packages, those people would be getting sick potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, there's another question on here. If someone needs to get a blood work, what could they do to protect themselves? If they need to get just basic blood work done, I mean, you're yes. going to worry, uh, then these, these, these laboratories that work in these labs, this is what they do every day of they go to work, even when we're not having outbreaks. The, the precautions they take. So I would feel confident going into a lab if I had to have blood work done, like it was the time that I had to get a metabolic panel drawn. I get it done every year on uh, April 1st, and it's like clockwork to go and get it done then I would feel completely confident into a testing facility as far as the, the lab workers. Those, those people are pros. The universal precautions that they practice are spot on. And I wish that people would take just a fraction of what they do and apply it in their daily life because that's, uh, that's a good model. Okay, so no, don't be too worried about getting something at uh, giving blood. No, um, but again, just be who's with you, the other people that maybe they're there and they're not well. Uh, so they should be right. screened. And, and I, I think the way I understand it is the people that are meant to go in and get blood work done, screened over the phone before they even come in, like, yeah, you're here to get blood work, but let's make sure you're not sick. So they're asking you a little list of questions, you know, have you traveled recently? Anybody been sick to try and limit you from even coming in and trying to delay that blood work if they can. Right. Okay. All right. Well, I think, um, I think that's probably a good, uh, informative session for today. I appreciate your time. We're going to try to come back tomorrow with another session. Um, if the schedule permits it here, we'll try to do uh, another live uh, session, but we'll have to see how things go. There's a, um, uh, we were again, uh, had a skeleton crew at the office today. Uh, we actually had to meet with the family of somebody that was killed in a wreck uh, earlier this week. So um, obviously I wanted to do that in person. If they wanted to do it in person, we were very careful about the meeting. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to continue to do that throughout this. Um, if we need to meet with somebody and they feel more comfortable meeting via uh, Zoom or Facebook, I did that today too. Um, we're happy to do that. But some cases are, are, are so serious and important that, you know, it's, it's important that uh, we see each other in person no matter what the issue is. Um, we can uh, be careful around each other and be smart and, um, and not get each other sick. So. Um, Thank you, Dr. Malone. We'll, uh, we may have other questions after hours. We can answer those online at, uh, on the Facebook page or at zarzalaw.com. You can email us at uh, info at zarzalaw.com. Of course, you can always call us at 855-HIRE-JOE. Y'all stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.